Cut content. It's what has went unused after being conceived in video game development. As such, today we'll be looking at the numerous cut content covering all of Pokemon Generation 1. From red, blue, and two yellows own exclusive cut content, why they were removed, and what is still left within the fabric of the data that holds the games. The development of Pokemon was a rather hectic one that started as a dream project for the brand new company known as Game Freak as early as 1990. Therefore, numerous ideas were sketched and planned for the game under the original title of Capsule Monsters. However, as opposed to a time restriction being a factor for why content was cut, the Game Boy being the platform it was being developed for carried many limitations including cartridge space, which became the very reason why a large deal of this content was cut in the end. A big chunk of these cut ideas was how they originally had conceived over 200 Pokemon as confirmed by Satoshi Tajiri, which as seen in these concept arts, they had even labeled some of them into the 200s. However, for the final game, they decided to dwindle the list down to 190 Pokemon, which was confirmed by Shigeki Morimoto. Data mining the game in fact showed that there were 190 slots available for these Pokemon. Yet, amongst the 190 slots, only 151 are filled with Pokemon and 39 went unused. Thanks to leaks, we learned the identity of many of these 39 Pokemon, including everything from an evolution to Raichu known as Gorochu and even an evolution to Marowak. Pre-evolutions also existed in abundance for Meowth, Zubat, Ponyta, Vulpix, and Goldeen, and mid-stage evolutions for Psyduck and Magnemite. Top that off with how Blastoise was separate from the Squirtle line and had its own pre-evolution while Wartortle evolved into a different Pokemon. Other than that, there were still many other Pokemon as well, six of which we still don't know actually to this day. As well, during development, numerous badges were thought up but eventually brought down to the scope of 8 gyms and badges that we have today. They all remained untranslated in the data, but the names of these cut badges still exist, including the Falcon Badge, Chill Badge, the... I can't pronounce this badge, and Friendship Badge. The first two of which were used for Generation 2. However, the more interesting take is that, along with these four that we never saw in-game, we had five other badges that were also left untranslated next to these four unused badges, including the Gold, Fireball, Rose, Shell, and Thunder badges, all of which became these. If one were to take these untranslated gym badges as Game Freak's original plan for gyms, then there were nine badges and gyms planned as opposed to eight. Originally, Professor Oak was meant to be the final boss of the game as opposed to your rival. Within the data of the game exists a battle you can have with Professor Oak, who has Pokemon of a higher level than even your rival, and would have had the third of the remaining starters too. This might have meant that he could have been either the real champion in the end, or a post-game boss. Interestingly enough, these concepts have appeared all over modern Pokemon games as a norm now. Long before the modern Pokemon games that gave you a bike that lets you surf on water without a Pokemon, an item existed within the development of Pokemon Generation 1 that lets you surf without the need of a Pokemon. Hard to say if this was just meant for debug purposes to get around easily, but this item is still within the data of the game and usable if hacked in. While not within the internal data of the game, there has been much evidence via the official artwork released for the Japanese strategy guide of the idea of including a third character to accompany Red and Blue on their journey, which appears to be this female trainer known as Green, or Leaf depending on who you ask. Ken Sugimori, the artist of Pokemon, has even confirmed on his Twitter as to how this character was drawn up as the third to be paired with a third starter too, and even influenced the creation of Leaf for the remakes of Fire Red and Leaf Green. Therefore, it might have been possible that she would have been either another rival you encountered or a female playable character. There is a single piece of music found within the game code that was not used within the final game. The music has a stereo track that appears to be rather damaged when played 
as it doesn't play back properly. However, the same song was found within the Pokemon Gold and Silver Beta ROM leak that had a proper version of it and it was called mtrade.dat, which means this would have been the song used while trading Pokemon. And since the Game Boy only had one speaker, the stereo track would have been split between both the Game Boys and would have played like this. However, exclusively within Yellow, there is also one additional unused track. Hard to say what this went with, but could have been a lead up to a major battle with how serious it sounds, potentially for facing Giovanni even. During the long concept of Capsule Monster that was presented, a map existed that was fairly similar to our final map of the whole game, except it contained a 12th town that never made it into the game. With that in mind, there indeed is a 12th entry that one can fly to, but when attempting it, it crashes your game as the original map was deleted. The original map showed that it was an island located west of Vermilion City and south of Celadon, hinting at a potential path one might have been able to take via the Saint Anne to get to Celadon City instead of the Rock Tunnel. What's more, a leak of assets that came from early development days shows what an early version of this map looked like, and it even contained that small truck that was just outside of the Saint Anne and also supposedly held Mew underneath it if you used strength on it. Which also shows how that mysterious truck the whole time was just a very old asset from the alpha stage of the game. Another exclusive to Pokemon Yellow, there exists an unused encounter text where if one has no Pokemon and hitting anything but run in the battle menu would bring up the text saying, hurry, get away. This encounter type also has a 100% chance of escape unlike the other encounter types. Because it is exclusive to Pokemon Yellow, it is possible that this was originally used as a way to meet Pikachu in the grass prior to Professor Oak catching it and giving it to you. Or maybe Yellow was trying to further replicate the anime with the Spearow clashes being implemented into the game, and your immobilized Pikachu would have triggered this as a way to escape all the wild Spearow. Hard to say what this was used for actually. What many people don't know is that in Pokemon Yellow, you had the ability to use the Game Boy printer to print out your Pokedex entries, your diploma, storage system, and party. However, one function was dummied out, which was that it also allowed you to print out a copy of the screen. Attempting to use it now via hacking on the overworld glitches the game. The Sylph Chief was the man you rescue in the Team Rocket raid of Sylphco, who gives you a Master Ball. However, you were originally going to be able to battle him. There is a trainer class called Sylph Chief within the data that you can battle. He even sports the sprite of the scientist that you face within Sylphco, suggesting he might have had a more villainous role. In fact, a string of texts exists in the data stating Sylph Manager is hiding in the Safari Zone, which might have pointed to him escaping the raid or even running from the law by hiding in the Safari Zone. Top that off as well with how his original sprite wasn't just a simple scientist sprite, rather he used the sprite for Blaine of Cinnabar Island. While Blaine had a different artwork and sprite of an older military man whose art still exists within the manual of the game. Now subscribers of this channel may have noticed that some of these I had already covered on my channel. While that is true, Many of these were covered in their own exclusive videos, which covered them in much more expanded detail and manner. If any of these have piqued your interest, a playlist exists where you can view some of these in their greater detail. However, this episode was a compilation of all that, plus included many other bits of cut content that were too small to have their own dedicated episode. 
Through my journey on documenting Pokemon Generation 1's cut content this past while, it has been a wonderful experience learning and theorizing what could have been and what it may have become if they had stuck to some of the decisions and didn't have that limited Game Boy card. And through this journey, I am glad how many of you enjoyed this mini-series. Cut content is planning to continue, but moving past Pokemon Generation 1, Pokemon Generation 2 and other series are definitely planned to come to cut content. Therefore, hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon to be notified for when I upload these episodes and hit the like button too if you liked it, dislike if you didn't and let me know in the comments below of what you would have liked from this list to have been specifically in the game. Until next time, thank you for watching.